Today we're going to be evaluating limit um, given a functions and we're going to be using some algebraic technique to um, evaluate limit given problems one, two, three, and four. So let's start with problem number one. We have limit of x minus four all over x squared minus seven x plus 12 as x approaches four. So the first thing that you need to do is to use the substitution method. And usually I just check the denominator to see if it's going to be equal to zero. So we can move on to uh, be, I mean, in using some algebraic techniques in solving the limit. So let's try it with substitution first. So we'll have x equal to four. So we have four squared minus seven times four, sorry, plus 12. And the numerator, I'm just going to leave it because um, I don't need to evaluate it to check if it's going to be undefined at x equal to 4. So here we'll have 8, 4 times 4, which is 16, I'm sorry, 16 minus 28 plus 12. And 16 minus 28 plus 12 is going to give us 0. So therefore, it's undefined at x equal to 4. So let's see if we can modify the function and uh, evaluate it at x equal to 4 again to really um, verify if it will be undefined at x equal to 4. Therefore, the limit will not exist. So by factoring, so let's use factoring. to uh, simplify or modify our rational function. So we have x minus 4 all over. So the factors of 12 that gives you negative 7 will be x minus 3 and x minus 4. And now we are seeing that the limit, as it approaches 4, can now be simplified because we can now cancel this and we'll have 1 over x minus 3. And by substitution, we're now going to evaluate the limit at x equal to 4, or as x approaches 4. So we'll have 1 all over 4 minus 3, which gives us 1 over 1. So therefore, the limit exists. So it exists now since um, by factoring we're able to modify the function and when we substitute the value of x again we're looking at 1 which means the function as x approaches 4 will be somewhere at y equal to 1 or at the vertical axis at 1. Now let's have problem number 2 and problem number 2 is a different function compared to 1 we are seeing square roots and for number 2 if we have limit of square root of x minus 6 minus 1 all over 7 minus x as x approaches 7. By substitution, if we plug in the value of 7 to x, we know that the function will be undefined. So we'll be using another technique to uh, solve this limit. And this time I'll be rationalizing. So this is another technique that you could use whenever you're seeing square roots in your limit function. So with this, if I have limit of square root of x minus 6 minus 1 all over 7 minus x as x approaches 7, rationalizing is simply multiplying it by the conjugate. So what I could do is multiply my fraction with the conjugate of my numerator because the numerator is the one with the square root and we will rationalize the numerator by multiplying the fraction by the conjugate of the numerator which is x minus 6 plus 1 all over square root of x minus 6 plus 1. So if we multiply the function with the conjugate of the numerator, what will happen is that if we multiply out conjugates, we now will just multiply the first term. And x minus square root of x minus 6 times square root of x minus 6 is simply x minus 6 because of the principle 
that if we have square root of x times square root of x, it'll be square root of x squared, which is going to be equal to x. So same principle applies to this example. And if we have 1 times, or negative 1 times 1, we'll have negative 1 all over 7 minus x multiplied by square root of x minus 6 plus 1. So by simplifying the function, we'll have x minus 7, 7 minus x, x minus 6 plus 1. And we cannot cancel this right away, but if we modify the numerator by pulling out a negative from the expression, we can modify the function into negative parentheses x plus 7. And by doing so, the denominator, which has 7 minus x, can now be canceled. So we can now cancel this, leaving us with negative 1 all over square root of x minus 6 plus 1. And with this uh, version of our function, let's now substitute it back to the limit function. So we have the limit of negative 1 all over square root of x minus 6 plus 1 as x approaches 7. And by substitution, we'll have negative 1 all over square root of 7 minus 6 plus 1. So now we'll end up with negative 1 all over square root of 1 plus 1, which is negative 1 over 2. So, the limit exists. So it exists because we found a real number um, that this value of x um, is giving you as it approaches 7. So that's problem number 2. We rationalize to uh, simplify or to evaluate our limit function. Now for problem number 3, we have a complex fraction. So if we have a complex fraction, we're going to be simplifying it. So number 3, we have limit of 1 over 4 plus 1 over x divided by 4 plus x as x approaches negative 4. Now let's check it first. 4 plus negative 4 will give us 0. So this one is undefined at negative 4. So what we're going to do is we are going to simplify complex fraction. So by simplifying our numerator, we might be able to modify the function in such a way that it will exist at x equal to negative 4. So let's go ahead and copy it down. We have limit of 1 over 4 plus 1 over x divided by 4 plus x. x approaches negative 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the numerator by adding them. So to add fractions, we know that if we have a over b plus c all over d, adding fractions with different denominator is as simple as a times d plus c times b all over b times d. And that's what we're going to be doing or using in simplifying the complex fraction in our numerator. So our numerator, we can change it into 1 times x plus 1 times 4 all over 4 times x. So divide it with 4 plus x. So now we can simplify the numerator and we can change it into 1 I mean x plus 4 all over 4x divided by 4 plus x. And now by further simplifying our complex fraction, we can now divide the, the function because it's just this divided by the denominator. So we can rewrite this as x plus 4 over 4x divided by or multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator which is 1 over 4 plus x. And by doing so, we're able to um, 
see that we can now cancel out the numerator because they are identical and we end up with 1 over 4x. So this is now our modified function for our complex fraction so we are now ready to evaluate the limit at x approaches negative 4. So if we have the limit of 1 over 4x as x approaches negative 4 by substitution we have 1 4 times negative 4 is now 1 over negative 16 which is negative 1 over 16 therefore the limit exists so problem number 3 which is a complex fraction we can modify it by simplifying the complex fraction now for the last problem we have a square root in our function so let's see if we will be needing uh, the rationalizing technique to solve this example. So number four, I have limit of x plus three minus one all over two x squared minus one as x approaches one. So by substitution, n is two times one squared minus one, n is two minus one, and the denominator did not turn to zero, so which means we don't need to uh, use any algebraic technique. All we have to do is to complete the substitution method to solve our limit. So the limit, as it approaches 1, by substitution, we'll have 1 plus 3 minus 1 all over 1 because we already know that this is equal to this. So we'll just evaluate the numerator and we'll have square root of 4 minus 1 over 1 which is 2 minus 1. So the limit exists. And these are the techniques that we could use in evaluate, evaluating limit. So we can factor, we can rationalize, we can simplify complex numbers and by substitution we can check that sometimes we don't need to use any special algebraic um, rule to be able to evaluate the limit.